We have enjoyed the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation way more than everyone said we would. And we hope to continue that today with episode 19. Absolutely. But before we get to that, you might notice something. It's the start of the video, and I'm over here, and he's over there, and we're facing the TV. That's because we have a new format. Yes, for the rest of season one of TNG, we're going to be going back to what we did for the Star Trek movies, where our reaction and our full review is going to be their own video. Um, after looking at the analytics as well as comments from you guys, we think this is the best way to do it, or at least to try out. This way, if you are one of those viewers who only likes the reaction, you can just come to this video. And if you're one of the viewers who enjoys the discussion, you can check out that video. Absolutely. But the main thing is, all the content's still there. It's just split up. And after we finish this first season, we'll assess the analytics and the response from you guys, see how that did for us, and just kind of see what we want to do going into season two in 2024. So we're not there yet, though. We got eight more episodes. So let's jump in. Jake, wait a second. How you doing? I'm fine. Really? Jake, I'm sorry. Only 32 points. I guess is that boy genius beat him in some sort of test. Yeah, I guess to go on some type of trip. Another weird and no captain's log until right now. Okay. Four one six point two. Did Wesley get a new haircut? I think he has a new haircut in every episode. <laughs> We're orbiting Relva 7, where Wesley Crusher is about to be tested for entrance into Starfleet Academy. What can we do for you? I need to speak with you. Certainly. This way. Number one. Alone. Is this a personal matter? Official business. Well, then my first officer. Alone, Captain. Oh, boy. But he gets to have his little assistant with him, but oh, not Picard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that looks to be an actual old man, not a young man in makeup, so. <laughs> yeah, true. Commander Remick is with the Inspector General's office. Oh. He'll be conducting a full investigation of the Enterprise. Oh, no. You will find out what is wrong on this ship. Yes, sir. Nothing and no one will stand in my way. <laughs> and you, Captain... Okay, bud. I'll be staying on the ship. As you wish, Admiral. Whoa, look at this. Yeah, see, the CGI wasn't as noticeable in that because it was a little bit further away. You yeah. Know, so can... You must be Wesley Crusher. Yeah. Do you know me? I heard there was a very smart, very young man who'd be tough competition. <laughs> You're lucky. You've had practical experience aboard the Enterprise. Oleana. Oh, shoot. You're screwed. Is that a Vulcan? I think so. Ooh! First named Vulcan. I'll be 16 next month. Well, happy birthday. Excuse me. He's about to get wrecked. And this guy looks badass, I'm too. I'm Wesley Crusher. Mordok. The Mordok? The Benzite who constructed the Mordok strategy? I thought you were already in the Academy. No, only a hopeful, like you. Is it like a breathing apparatus for him? Yeah, he's permanently hitting the vape. <laughs> you are here because you are all top candidates. Although only one student will be chosen for the Academy. Is it bad that I'm already bought in to like watch a full spinoff, like in between season show of just that premise? <laughs> yeah. Like a little game show or something? Yeah. Something I could help you with, Mr. Remick? When I'm ready, Mr. Riker, I'll want to speak with you. Privately. So this guy's the dick. It's a D1 Glazer. Commander, just having that guy around makes me feel guilty. What's he after anyway? I don't know, Jordy, but I'm gonna find out right now. The worst thing you can have a micromanaging person right over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Get off my ass. I'm doing my job. Captain, may I speak frankly? Oh boy. Always number one. As first officer, I should be informed. I should know everything that you know. That's right, you should. And my job is to see that this ship runs smoothly. Which you do very well. Sir, am I under investigation? I don't know. You all are. I want some answers from you now, Commander Wright. Later. You are ordered to cooperate now. <laughs> there you go, standing right up to him. I love that shot of like, oh, by the way, everyone else is in this episode yeah, too. Like, oh yeah, there's <laughs> Troy, there's Worf. <laughs> are you available now, Mr. Riker, or do you still have duties to perform? I'm available, Mr. Remick. I love that he shared that little laugh with Picard there. Yeah. Any problem with using your ready room, Captain? No, Mr. Remick. Be my guest. And I love that Riker has, like, this chip on his shoulder about this whole thing. Like, it definitely fits his character. Yeah. As Picard's more, like, accepting, like, yeah, you know, it's Starfleet. Gotta yeah. let him do their thing. But, like, I Riker, like, is it me? Am I under investigation? It's like, it makes sense because he wasn't allowed to be involved. Like, I should know everything, but... If you prefer to stand, fine, Mr. Riker. 
it won't have an effect on the length of my inquiry. He's only standing because of the uniform hurts his back. <laughs> there are several seeming discrepancies in the captain's log. Let's go over them one by one, shall we? The captain's log? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, has the captain ever falsified a log? Have you discussed this with him? Right now, I'm asking you. I was trying to think. I'm like, I don't think there's ever been something we that we're aware of, at least. Just the one time where it was falsified. But it, yeah, it wasn't him. Yeah, it was just yeah. like a fake thing, yeah. His bridge crew didn't think highly of Mr. Kosensky's theories, yet the captain allowed him to access the engines anyway. Is that true before? It's so weird to hear him reference other episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe the captain is emotionally and psychologically fit oh, no. for command of this starship? There's nothing in his history or personality that would suggest uh, mental lapses? Nothing. Not even the Ferengi incident aboard his old starship, the Stargazer? He was being controlled by a mind-altering machine, Commander. They're recapping the whole season. Like, it's only been 18 episodes, this dude's already fucked up several times. This guy's the another version of Gene Roddenberry trying to get rid of Picard. <laughs> How can they know what my deepest fear is when I don't? By analyzing your psychological profile. They were very accurate about everyone I tested with. Including myself. You? I thought there was nothing that could frighten a Klingon warrior. Only fools have no fear. Morph man, he spits out those great one-liners. It's like, finally, they're using him for something, and he kills it. There's an unauthorized entry in Main Shuttle Bay. Unauthorized? Who is it, Lieutenant? Computer reads the ID number of Jake Kurland. Not now, Remick. Gonna take this out, Captain. I'm locking off bay launch doors, Captain. Too late. He's using the flight emergency override. Worf got there fast. Another one of those weird cuts between scenes. Lieutenant Yard, open channel. Is this the kid from the beginning? Mr. Curlin, this is Captain Picard. Mr. Curlin. Captain, I'm going to oh, build yeah. K-9 and sign on to a freighter. I tell my father I, I'm sorry. You can tell him yourself. In person, bring that ship back at once. No, I can't face him. I'm leaving. This is a funny coincidence, but that's the second time someone has said, like, tell my father, and Picard said, no, tell him yourself in person. He literally said the same exact thing in the kid episode. I lost power. All he's got left is his maneuvering jet. At this trajectory, he'll enter the atmosphere and burn up at an altitude of 200 kilometers. Ooh. Zero one two. Six seconds to impact. Hold on, Jake. It's going to be a little bumpy. Zero one five. Zero one nine. Pull up hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cullen, I assume you can maneuver it home? Yes, sir. Do it. Then report to Mr. Riker. Ooh, you're in trouble. Another great example of using a character would be believable to die, so the tension and the stakes feel real. Yes, yes. So this kid was just gonna ruin his entire life, just run away, join some other ship. Yeah, and he's like, I'm out of here. Oh no, I'm gonna die, save me! <laughs> just like immediately. It's like, ah, no wonder Wesley beat you out. <laughs> Excuse me, you blocked my path. Oh boy. You Bulgarian sludge rat! Is there a problem here, gentlemen? Uh, no, sir. I... Look, how dare you? I am Rondon! Oh, look at his hand. What, what is he? Who do you think you're bullying? You bumped into me. It was your mistake. You were at fault. Do you want this to become violent? <laughs> okay, Wesley, damn. Taking on the 30-year-old senior. I like you. <laughs> Stand up to him. A very strange reaction. Not really. Congrats, Wesley. You passed the test. <laughs> Zaldins are infuriated by courtesy. They view it as a form of phony social behavior designed to cover true feelings. It's important to know how you candidates deal with other species. Then it was a test. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Your captain is not what he appears to be. Do not forget that you have loyalty to Starfleet above all else. Loyalty is not the issue, Commander. There is nothing wrong with Captain Picard or the ship's logs. Therefore, there must be something wrong with your original assumption. Could it be not all tests are announced? They're actually testing everyone's loyalty? <laughs> oh, God. Could that be it? Just how did this contaminant get aboard the ship? Oh, wait a minute. By oh, accident. that was the best transition in the whole fucking show. Oh, my God. 
That is so cool. Who directed this? <laughs> <laughs> that like gave me chills, dude. That was so <laughs> awesome. Character. That was great. Ah, did it again. That was good too. Love it. I don't know if you could top that first one though, with the, the that, no. black mirror of the screen. Yeah, that, that was perfect. You can be completely open with me. About what? About how you feel serving with a man who is responsible for the death of your husband. Oh, this guy just sucks, huh? It's true though. Yeah. To an extent. My personal feelings are irrelevant to this investigation and none of your business. I think the Admiral just is using this guy. They just want everyone to turn on Picard so the Admiral can be captain again. I don't know. The fun part is, I really don't know. I don't know, yeah. and that's great. Are you afraid if I keep looking, I'll find that you're guilty? The only thing I'm guilty of is allowing this charade to go on so long. Charade. Got him. <sighs> I don't know, man, but that was one of the best scenes of the series so far, in my opinion. Oh, it was great. For a split second when it switched to Worf, I thought it was going to be like a shape-shifting type thing. I'm like, oh, it's a different scene. Wesley, I can't do it. Yes, you can. You've got your rotation factor. Just put in your vector coordinates. Congratulations, Mordok. That was the second fastest time ever recorded on this test. You all did well. No, it should not have been that way. Mr. Crusher helped me. An interesting choice, Mr. Crusher. Especially considering how close you and Mr. Mordok are in overall score. You all have an hour to prepare for your last test. I thought I was going to lead into, you cheated. Or, or yeah, but they're just trying to show the selflessness, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to officer after officer a at length. I pried into the ship's logs, and yet I could find nothing wrong. So he was just bullshitting that whole time when he was, like, uh, saying something was wrong? Mm -hmm. Did he even know what he was looking for? Or I bet he told him, like, something's wrong, you better go find it out, you know, so that he tried so hard. Mm -hmm. My tour in the inspector general's office will be up in six months. When I'm finished, this is where I'd like to serve, sir. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> nice little redemption there for his character. Yeah, yeah. Just doing his job. Only playing the bad cop, though. Some of us at Starfleet Command became suspicious of certain problems in the Federation. What kind of problems? I need people I can trust in strong positions throughout the Federation. You have my complete support, you know that. That's not enough. I want to promote you to Admiral, and I want you to take over as Commandant of Starfleet Academy. The Academy? Yes. It's not a decision I can make quickly. I need an answer soon. All right. You'll have it tonight, Admiral. I know that's probably not gonna like set up something for the series. No, no. It's interesting that they're bringing it up though, like outside yeah. stuff going on. And that, do you think it's gonna be one of these three other people with Wesley or this dude? Oh, you think they're gonna like resolve it this episode? I thought they were just they were just bringing it up just as like a thing. Like I didn't, I don't I'd expect, so. I don't expect, you know, like a, a mole or something. Mm -hmm. But maybe how much time we got left? <laughs> <laughs> That'll determine. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird to just drop that in. And then just go into, oh yeah, and I want you for this job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, it was like it was that was a reason for wanting him for the, you know. But yeah, I don't know. I just like it more as a just out there like breadcrumbs thing, even if they never yeah. return to it. And as we can see, they're pretty good with remembering stuff that's happened and referencing it. This is the psych test, just putting you in an empty room, solitary confinement. Oh, their tests are really good. Or, this actually happened. <laughs> yeah. On! You're not hurt! I can't move through them! Yes, you can! Oh, God. Oh. Uh. Officer Chang, this... Wesley. It's all right. Thanks. An excellent performance, Mr. Crusher. <laughs> that was the test. Yes. A man could have died. Theoretically, yes. You had to make a choice, and you did. There's no right or wrong about it. Your greatest fear has been that you couldn't make that decision. Because someone made that choice, and my father died. Like his choice to leave that guy behind? Mm. Even though, I mean, what, literally, what would, what would the choice have been? I don't know. Leave them both in there? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'm leaving. And you can inform the crew that... 
Admiral Quinn is most impressed. Thank you. Can you explain now what he was after? They were after me, number one. <laughs> they want me to take over as Commandant Starfleet Academy. Congratulations. What a wonderful choice. You'll be able to shape the minds of the future leaders of Star Trek. <laughs> Why does he look so angry? It's like, I don't want to do that, number one. <laughs> You're not taking my job. I'm proud of all of you. You've done a superb job. Each of you would make a fine Starfleet officer. It's unfair that only one candidate from Relva will attend the Academy this year. And a loss to the Federation if the rest of you do not return to test again. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Mr. Mordock will be the candidate. His results were slightly higher than Mr. Crush's. Congratulations, Mr. Mordock. I love that. Well, they can always come back next year, I guess. I was worried, like, you get one chance and that's it. Mm -hmm. I am sorry, Wesley. It's okay. You deserve to win. Besides, you would have done the same for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's like, it's all right. I'm already literally on an Enterprise as acting ensign. I think I'll be okay. So you better be ready next year, Wesley. I won't be easy to beat. They just both checked her out as she left the room. It's not subtle at all. Mr. Cullen. Look at that outfit. Ooh. I hope you've learned that running away solves nothing. Thank you for, for, for saving my life. That's my job, young man. I failed, Captain. I didn't get into the Academy. I failed you, and I failed the Enterprise. Ridiculous. If it helps you to know this, I failed the first time, and you may not tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I have to disappoint an old friend. This is where you belong. I love that we didn't have to see, like, the conversation, just that line as he left, like, I have to go disappoint him. It's like, you you know what happened. Yeah, yeah. We don't need the whole dinner scene. Mr. Crusher? Engage. You want to go first, or? Well, I'm going to steal it from you. But uh, my favorite part is that transition uh, interrogation scene. Absolutely. Where, like... Completely took me off guard because I don't know cin cinematography like that does not come along often in Star Trek and like little c cuts like that so like fluently in there that with all these different people. Yeah, that whole scene, the smooth transitions throughout the whole thing was great, but that first one really got me. Uh, that was amazing. My favorite thing is just the writing all around, the character writing. Uh, everyone got a little piece, at least one, like even, you know, Troy got one scene. Uh, did Tasha ever get talked to? I don't know if she ever got one. No, not really. Just, but she was kind of just there, just looking around. But the writing, you know, with the scene with Worf and Wesley, the scenes with, uh, all the kids and everything we'll talk about. But, but yeah, that was just my favorite part. The, the writer of this episode did a great job. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this one. I'm really excited to talk about it too. I feel like we're gonna have a lot yeah, to say. Absolutely. And if you want to see us talk about it more... Click right here. <laughs> Just leave it there for like 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>